Hello, hello! So today we're going to take a detailed look into planning a VFR flight and we'll also look at some of the key components that need to be considered. Now one thing I must stress before I continue is that this is how I would personally plan for a flight in FSX. This is not going to be a guide on following real world regulations to the letter, but we're still going to enough detail to make it feel quite involved. So where do you begin with flight planning? Well first, I think that there are several key areas that need that are relevant to flight planning. The first is the route that you want to fly, so you can get a general idea of where you actually want to go. Next up will be to look at the weather. Is it good enough to allow for VFR flying, or are there going to be weather factors which will affect the flight? Next up, we'll learn how to calculate your fuel usage for the duration of the flight. After that, I also like to go and look at the details for the flight. So here we'll be looking at things such as airport radio frequencies, specific VFR landmarks and a few other details there. And then lastly, you need a contingency or a backup plan, such as an alternate airport to land at if the weather takes a turn for the worst, for example. Now, as I said, this isn't a rigid procedure. Some people will plan the route the night before and then check the weather the following day. Others might wake up, have a look at the weather and then decide, hey, it's a nice day for flying, and then go on, plan the routes and the rest of the things that are needed there. So there's no set way of doing this, and there's also a bit of overlap between each of the, um, the, sort of the sections that I've mentioned there. But anyway, let's have a look at planning your routes first. So the first thing is to get an idea of where you want to start, where you want to fly, and ultimately where you want to end up be that at the airport you started at or somewhere completely different. So what I'm going to do is plan a flight for my A2A Cessna 172 during this video so you can see how things progress. I'm also going to be using a free flight planner tool called Plan G which is available from www.tasoftware.co.uk. So one place I know which has lots of good landmarks and visual reference points is London. Now I know there's all kinds of airspace restrictions here, but I'm not going to worry about those, it's just a game after all. And also, flying over London in a Cessna is not something you, you can do in the real world, so doing it in a simulator is a fun way to mix things up a bit. So what I'm going to do is start here at Farnborough, to the southwest of London, and then fly up to Heathrow, which will be our first major waypoint along the journey. Then I'm going to follow the River Thames through the middle of London for a bit of a sightseeing tour until we reach London City Airport, which will be my second waypoint here. Then continue to follow the Thames out to the east until we reach South End and land at the airport there. So basically that's step one, having a basic idea of where we want to fly. Now step two would be to have a look at the weather. So let's imagine that we want to fly in about an hour's time. We need to ask, will the weather be okay? Remember that we need good weather and good visibility for VFR flying. Well, in Plan G, you can actually grab the latest METAR reports from various airports. If you right-click on the airport, you'll see in the middle of the menu that pops up that it gives a METAR report, and also a TAF report, which is a longer-term forecast of the weather. So you can read those to get an idea of what the weather is like. So let's have a look now and see what we've got. Okay, so let's have a closer look at our kind of weather along our route here. So starting at Farnborough, we have a right click here. So um, let's have a look here. So the wind is three six zero at six knots. So it's it's a low wind. So it's you'd be worried if you were trying to fly in high winds with the aircraft as small as the Cessna, but six knots is fine. Uh, the winds are variable from three two zero to zero two zero. Visibility is perfect. Ah, now this could be a problem. Few clouds at 1,500 feet, so that's quite low down. That's quite a low altitude. So for this flight, I'd probably want to fly at about 2,000 feet. So the few clouds at 1,500 could be a problem there. But anyway, let's have a look at along the rest of the route and see what it's like. So going up to Heathrow, uh, winds 360 at five knots, so the winds are about the same. Uh, w variable, at about the same visibility is good. NCD so there's no clouds there and no significant change so once we get up towards kind of Greater London cloud coverage doesn't seem too bad there. Have a look at London City uh, winds 3008 knots so it's a bit stronger there. Uh, Cabox so ceiling and visibility okay there so again no clouds there over London so that's looking promising. 
And then if you have a look at South End, uh, 3409 knots, a few clouds at 1,900 feet, so it's a bit low again, uh, but the visibility is good there. So, uh, yeah, at, at the moment, I'd want to, I may delay like the takeoff, uh, but if we have a look at the TAF report here, um, what this is basically saying is on the 15th of the month between 1800 and 2100 hours Zulu, uh, this will be the sort of predicted weather, so the winds are still going to be coming out of sort of the north. And visibly, it's going to be fine. But you see, the cloud layer is going to lift up to 4,500 feet. So within the next few hours, um, the cloud layer should kind of lift up to a higher altitude. So that would make um, that would make taking off a bit better. However, there is also a temporary warning here for some showers or rain showers in the vicinity of the airport visibility is going to come down a little bit and we've got broken clouds at 1,400 feet so um, so taking off there might be a bit of a problem so that's uh, something that you would probably keep an eye on if this was a real world flight. Next up you need to work out how much fuel you'll need for the trip which involves a little bit of maths. The main thing to consider is that when you're planning for fuel, the, your focus is on the length of time of the flight and not the distance. So to give you an example, when you're driving a car, cars are always specified as this car will give you 30 miles per gallon or something like that. It's X amount of fuel will drive you Y amount of distance and that's not the case with planes. With aircraft, if you're going to use the same example, you would say something like, this plane will give you 20 minutes of flight per gallon of fuel. You know, the, the fuel is always measured against time and not distance. So before we can do that, we need to go back to our route plan and look at it in a little more detail. Once you've plotted your route, you'll need to add in some additional information to help the program calculate the plan for you. So on the Home tab, you'll see a group of icons here the first one is your start position, which will allow you to designate your starting position within the sim. So here I'm going to choose a GA parking spot. Next up is the altitude that you want to fly at. So for this flight I'm going to say about 2000 feet will be a good cruising altitude. Then you can set your cruising airspeed. So for this I'm going to set it to 90 knots, take things nice and slow. Then you have the winds. So I'm going to just take a rough average from the METARs that I read earlier. So I'm going to enter 000 for the winds coming from the north. And it was about 9 knots average for wind speed there. And then lastly is the aircraft profile. So in this window you can enter a lot of performance data which will help the program calculate fuel usage and other things for you. Most of this data can be found online or if you're using an, an add-on aircraft like I am, you can find the charts with performance data in the manual that comes with the plane. So to find the fuel usage, click on the view button at the top here and then click on plan. You'll see that you get a small kind of plan of your flight here. And if you have a look at right at the bottom, you'll get your total fuel estimate, which in this case is six. So that'll be six US gallons. Now, alternatively, if you're not using Plan G to plan your flight, you could use these formulas for working out a rough estimation of fuel usage. So to calculate how much fuel is used per hour, you take the fuel capacity of the aircraft and divide it by the maximum range divided by the cruise speed, which gives that range. So using my A2A Cessna as an example, the capacity is 53 US gallons and then you divide that by a max range of 687 nautical miles divided by 105 knots indicated airspeed. So to look at that second calculation first, um, 687 divided by 105 gives me 6.54. So 53 divided by 6.54 equals 8.1 US gallons of fuel used per hour. As I said, that's just a rough calculation. Next you take the distance of the flight and divide it by your planned cruise speed to work out the length of the flight. So this flight that I've planned is 60.5 nautical miles and the planned cruise speed was 90 knots. So that gives me a flight time of 0 0.67 hours which is about 40 minutes or two thirds of an hour. 
And then finally, to work out the estimated fuel usage for the flight, you simply take the length of the flight and multip sorry, multiply it by the fuel usage per hour. So that would be 0 0.67 hour long flight times 8.1 US gallons per hour gives us 5.4. So at the end of the day, our for our flight, we'll need approximately 5.4 US gallons of fuel. Now, in the real world, this isn't enough. You need to calculate how much fuel you're going to use while you taxi, while you climb, and while you descend, and all sorts. You need to take into the wind into consideration as well. But what I'm going to recommend for VFR sim flying is that you add in two more fuel measurements for safety. In the real world, you have something called reserve fuel, which is used in case you need to divert to a different airport for whatever reason. I also believe that it's a legal requirement when you file a flight plan that you have a reserve amount of fuel calculated sort of as a safety buffer so to speak so um, in the real world from what I've read online it that's about 30 minutes worth of extra fuel so let's add that in now so 30 minutes of reserve fuel would be 4.05 US gallons so that brings our total up to 9.5 gallons roughly and then what I like to do is add in my own so safety buffer of about an hour's worth of fuel. So let's add on an hour's worth of fuel, 8.1 US gallons, and that should cover any and all eventualities on the flying front. So after all of that, my total fuel for the flight will come to 17.5 US gallons. Hopefully you guys managed to follow all of that okay. Um, it's probably the hardest part of planning a flight to be fair. So let's take a moment and recap what we've got so far. So we know our basic route. We're starting at Farnborough, going up to Heathrow, flying along the Thames to London City Airport, and then continuing our flight along the Thames until we reach Southend. We know that we've got winds coming from the north at about 9 knots, and the visibility is good, however the cloud layer is quite low over London, which may cause issues. And then finally, what we've just worked out is that our 17.5 gallons of fuel should be enough to cover the entire flight, plus a little more if we have any trouble. Now next up you need to gather all of the details that you'll need for the flight. So think of this as basically bulking out your route plan with everything that you can think of. So to give you an example of the things that I would look for for this flight, um, starting at Farnborough I would probably find a map of the airfield first of all. This is so that I could learn the layout of the runways and also the taxiways. I would also make a note of the various radio frequencies used by air traffic control at the airport. After that I'd be looking at navigation information so I know how to get from Farnborough up to Heathrow after taking off. Fortunately in Plan G all of this is given on a handy page. If you go to the file menu and then down to prints, you can click on the print flight plan button where you'll find this page with a lot of navigation information. You can see that this page contains headings and the amount of time it will take to fly each leg of the journey. So that gives you more specific details for actually flying the route. As we progress along the route, I would also start to make notes of visual landmarks that I'll be looking for on the ground to confirm my position. So as we fly along the Thames, we'll probably come across the Battersea Power Station first of all. And then after that, I'll probably look for the Hazards of Parliament, the London Eye, Tara Bridge, Canary Wharf and also the Millennium Dome. So I'd make a note of all of those various landmarks so we can tick them off as we go past them. You know, think of the landmarks as checkpoints along our flight. And then finally, when we get to South End, I'd probably get a map of South End Airport as well so I know what to expect when I get there, you know, with runways and taxiways. And of course also note down the ATC frequencies again. Then finally, it's worth remembering that sometimes not all things go to plan. The weather might cause a problem, you might have an issue with the plane, or you may simply get lost when you're flying. So you need to consider a couple of things to make sure you remain safe. The main thing that's normally required in a real world flight plan is an alternate airport to land at if you cannot land at your planned airport. So take a look at the map again and see what airports you have nearby or even along the route. Here we're actually quite lucky that we've got two airports along our route that we could land at if the worst came to the worst. 
However, if we look near the end of our route, we could divert south to Rochester if the weather at South End got too bad, for example. Now, if you're comfortable with instrument navigation, you could also incorporate nav aid information into your, into your backup plan. Sorry. One option here is that South End actually has an NDB station, which would allow you to tune in your ADF instrument and fly directly to it. What you could also incorporate into a backup plan is a GPS route, which gives you an easy method of navigating. I talk about how to transfer your Plan G route into FSX in this tutorial here, so click on the video just now or in the link below to go and see how to do that. And then once you finalise that, you're pretty much ready to go. You should have most, if not all, of the information you need to make a successful flight. So, looking forward to my next video, I'm going to follow on from everything that I've planned here and simply do a VFR flight from Farnborough over to Southend. Hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.